Welcome to a show that I am going to show you how I've gone backwards on something that I cared a lot about. Let's put the microphone closer, see if that makes everybody happy that you can hear and see me uh, on a beautiful Sunday night here in, uh, thanks to Karen Lee Edwards for saying, uh, it is, uh, yes, in Florida. I am not in Kansas. I am not in South Dakota. I am definitely here in South, in, uh, where am I? In Florida. Uh, so tell me where you're from. I'm going to start the show with the tradition of checking my numbers and, um, and then giving you the heads up that I am going to talk about something that I, I just, I can't believe I did this. <laughs> I can't believe I did this. Um, and that this is um, a, a bit of a struggle with, um, what we're going to talk about tonight. And that is vitamin D. So stick around. I'm, I'm, a, yeah, you're going to see some, uh, of the best sides of me, which is the real ones. <laughs> yes. Oh uh, yeah. So glucose, uh, 92 ketones 1.0. So I guess that's an easy, easy Dr. Boz ratio. And I am, just uh, happy that I have several of you that have showed up over the last few weeks while I've been on the road, um, really trying to find a way to keep the uh, Sunday nights as uh, informative and as valuable to those followers that do have um, uh, a need for a community for, on a ketogenic journey. I am going to drink my ketones <laughs> over this next uh, hour. We'll check my numbers at the end. We'll give away some books at the end. And in between here and there, you're going to learn a lot about just even how when you are trying to do it right, uh, things go wrong. And um, there's nothing like data <laughs> that get me back on track. So um, I do have some announcements. Uh, they are for some people that live near Florida. I've had lots of you reach out saying, when am I going to start my support group? Uh, I... I'm a big fan of being in a support group and being part of a support group that isn't, uh, you can say it's altruistic, but it's really selfish that I stay on track when I've got people that join me in this journey and not just on a virtual setting, but in the real world. And this journey uh, of a support group has been something that I uh, teach into all the courses I lead. It's what I my clinic is based on is support groups and how important they are to change behavior as an internist, we do the long game. And without a big um, strategy for prevention, um, that's that's where the whole game is in internal medicine. And if you want to see the best internist, it's the ones the patients notice the least because we prevented the problems that you were trying to prevent, that you were trying to avoid. And I find you can't do that unless you're in a support group, uh, unless you've got some a uh, wonderful connection to other people. You don't need to be a doctor to lead a support group. I try to empower those folks that are starting a support group or leading one. And I'm the first to say that um, if you're, well, let's do one more thing. If you are leading a support group, be sure to write into the channel, uh, hello at bozmd.com and let us know that you're leading a support group. I love to zoom in, answer questions for anybody whose support groups have found a little rhythm and have people showing up. Uh, it, it is free. It is something I really do want people doing. Uh, and anybody who's looking to start one, uh, that's one of the things I do. Um, the other part of an, an announcement that I need to make is I have, again, we are in Florida. We have a new journey. We have two kids that started college these last two weeks, and our youngest son is a transferring sophomore. And there is a change in our family schedule that I need to fix. So we've been doing Sunday night lives for a while. And at least for the next 90 days, I think we're going to have to move it to a different day. Um, so I know that's, uh, I feel like I have a really good rhythm going. And um, I'll just say there's there's so many conflicts over the next 90 days that we're going to do better if we just go to a different day. We'll try it out for three months, see how that works. That's when this uh, season should end. And then they switch our schedules again. So I will say to all you parents out there that do try to keep those scheduled balance and keep your family first, that's really what I'm trying to do. So, um, you know, throw some comments in about what day would look better for you. I'm hoping for it to be the weekdays because it looks like Saturdays are pretty heavy for the, uh, he's part of the band and he's part of the uh, wrestling team. So 
I am looking for a fit. I thought I could move it a couple hours either direction uh, on Sundays, but I'm just telling you, it's got sabotage written all over it. So if you can uh, share where where you think uh, your um, where you think your uh, it would fit the best, we'll give a, a really big poll to those that are in the neurons group, which is uh, that private book private face on place on Facebook that really does have um, uh, my attention and my um, my, my love, my appreciation of all the people who've really dove into the level of keto that I like to live at and teach at. Uh, and those are my, my neurons. Um, let's do a couple of quick things that I want to say thank you for. Um, and one of those is, uh, let's see here. We are going to go to um, the book reviews. I have a couple folks that did a great job of uh, putting in their book review that book reviews this past um, uh, week. And uh, this one is a five star. This is on the, the actual the Keto Continuum workbook uh, and came in this past week saying, from a fellow struggler, Dr. Boz presents the easy to understand steps to stay on track and stay keto. Uh, what do you do when you expect a stall? The setbacks that we all experience, clear, concise information, step-by-step -step guidance, most of all, discovering why you have certain habits and how to overcome them. I'm so happy that I purchased this. Uh, tried this previous merg around. Thank you, Dr. Boz. You know, Renee, I, I truly appreciate uh, writing that for me. It is the best way to say thank you is watching to see um, how much uh, a private uh, published author needs the people to write reviews. I had no idea it was this important. And although this one was uh, written last week, um, I, I still wanted to um, say great for accountability and mindfulness. Uh, I'm hoping this keto journey is current. Uh, I'm hoping this keto journey I'm currently enjoying, enjoying will be as successful as I can make it with the help of this workbook. Dr. Boz, has thought of all the details into hooking patients into this lifestyle and give this way of life a go uh, and for enjoying much success and proof of success. Thank you, Dr. Boz. Uh, let's quick hop over. This one actually is the Keto Continuum, the book. Um, and again, this one was just written two days ago. I just want to say thank you, Family Rose. Um, and she gives five stars. This book helped answers so many keto questions. This book is great. I hope to be keto for life. It helps me see how much my eating behavior is affecting my health. My story is a lot like the man in this book, had lots of energy swings uh, while the scales kept creeping up. I love how much sense it all makes, and especially with following my Dr. Boz ratio and fasting. Reading this book and then, uh, read this book and then go for it and fast. <laughs> That can scare people at the beginning, but I'm telling you, it really does help. My head aches. My headaches are gone. Mood is stable. Cravings are gone. Arthritis symptoms are gone. And I've lost all my extra menopausal weight uh, would not uh, go no matter how little I ate and how much I exercised, which was so frustrating. Thank you, Dr. Boz. Truly life-changing. You know, it's the kind of uh, reviews that, um, you know, some days you wonder, am I making a difference with anybody? Uh, and I know that sounds... You, you show up on Sundays and you can see the the, the positive um, uh, feedback and the affirmation of praising some of these. But I will tell you, there are days where you're like, oh, you know, seeing patients is only a one by one process. And I just found that I couldn't I couldn't have made the impact that we've seen in this group and the others that I've led without a. Um, without what the book has done and transmitted that information. So yes, the secrets are in the book. Uh, you are gonna see, hear some of my unfortunate steps here today. And let's get started with that because it's kind of gonna be hard for me to tell you all this. Uh, I'm, I'm a little frustrated um, in a good way, I guess. <laughs> How's that for believing? Uh, all right, let's go over to the keynote slides and um, Get you started. All right. So I'm going to remind you, for those of that have been watching, that um, I am not um, I'm not afraid to tell you that there is uh, 
quite a process to improving your chemistry within the ketogenic diet. And one of those markers on how well patients are doing, um, I've talked about the Dr. Boz ratio and uric acid, but another long-term fat soluble molecule that really does keep you understanding how well you're doing on the ketogenic diet is your vitamin D. And there are lots of things we're going to talk about tonight about what vitamin D does. But in short, I was having a really big struggle in um, January. Oh, that's giving away the punchline there a little bit. Um, there we go. Let's try again. Uh, in January 2021, um, I had just pushed publish on the keto continuum. I was really trying to get that workbook organized and felt it was overwhelming. It was daunting. I couldn't seem to... I just couldn't get it to go. <laughs> so... Um, I wrote down what would I tell my patients to do that I wasn't doing. And a couple of them was before I could tell me what to do, I had to check a couple of things. And I had recently invested in uh, putting my name on a point of care measurement, uh, home measurement for vitamin D. Uh, because it is kind of a stickler to measure, most insurances don't like to cover it more than once every couple of years, and boy, it changes way faster than that. So I had just um, launched that product and said, okay, I'm going to check my vitamin D, and I'll be a little cocky and say I was expecting it to be just fine. Like 50 is what it's been, 55. I've, I've always been good, but I checked it, and it was terrible. <laughs> It was terrible. Uh, it was 39, which um, is, again, not the worst thing in the world, but it truly has um, um, was a little eye opening that I'm like, oh, my vitamin D is below 50. Again, I chirp at my patients day in, day out that uh, a vitamin D above 50 is where the goal is. Um, keeping it out of those 30s and 20s um, is super important. Um, the higher end of the 40s, I'll give you a little bit of grace, but really you get the benefits in those, in those 50s and 60s. So I said, all right. I've been taking my vitamin D, K2, K2, D3 supplement, but I wasn't doing it seven days a week like I tell my patients to. I probably wasn't even getting it in five days a week, maybe like three days a week. So I said, all right, um, let's be solid on those three days. Let's just make sure it really is three days. And then I did something a little unconventional, which was go to a tanning bed, um, which I almost had to like put on dark glasses and a hoodie and like not let any of my patients see that I was going to go into a tanning bed because I had been the doctor that chirped about how tanning bed and cancer was correlated, uh, skin cancer I meant, um, but I was wrong and we're going to go through that in just a second too. So I went to the tanning bed, I did four minutes twice a week, so a total of eight minutes a week. The goal was to not burn, but make sure that there were plenty of UVB as in biology, UVB um, uh, bulbs in the uh, in the tanning bed. It was actually the cheapest one when it comes to those tanning uh, salons. Uh, like there was all kinds of fancy beds. This one was just the plain bed. And um, by golly, uh, four weeks later, I checked my numbers and <laughs> it was up to 59. And I was like, oh, that's life again. That feels better. And I'll be honest, I felt better. I had better energy. I was back to, you know, I really back in the rhythm of writing the workbook. I'd found my groove again. It was, I wouldn't say easy, but it was better. It was better. And so then I kept on a pattern. I talked to you guys about it a few weeks and said, okay, here's one of my hacks. Here's what I've been doing. The key is you got to measure. And then I kind of got, I kind of got lazy. <laughs> I mean, getting to this tanning bed was pretty methodical at first, but then about two months in, I'm like, you know, maybe it'd been three weeks since I'd been. And, and then it got to be March, April, then it was May. And then we got the news that we were moving to Tampa and then life went nuts. Um, and we packed up life and we got the house done and we moved into a hotel room and we moved two kids to college. And in that month of August would be the time where I would check my kids vitamin D. So I want their brains to be ready for school. It's the sunniest month in um, in South Dakota, so it should have been totally fine. And as I was checking theirs, I felt, okay, I'll just check mine. And again, I was being a little cocky, saying, oh, mine's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And then it wasn't. It was worse than it had been before. And I wasn't sleeping good. I hadn't been great about, I mean, I was keto and I fasted each week, but 
I was breaking rules and I had the exercise that was doing well suddenly had to stop because we were moving all over the country and and I was really ticked off at myself actually. End of July is when I checked it. July 24th, you can see there, and it was 32. Um, it was that next week that I said, okay, I gotta, I gotta get a game on here again. And that's when I did the sardine challenge. So I took the uh, privilege of having an extra kit and saying, well, what would happen at the beginning and end of one week of just eating sardines? And so the following week, I seven days later, or maybe it was eight days later, I checked my uh, vitamin D again, and it was up to 36, but that's still lower than what it was in January of 2021, just six months before. Uh, so of all of my family, I was the worst. It was very embarrassing. Like, oh, here I am chirping at them for how important this is for your brain, for function. And I just, yeah. Yeah. So we are going to talk about a couple things on vitamin D and why I care so stinking much about this. And what did I, I mean, what, what's really going on there? So let's start by saying, all right, where did it go? Where did my vitamin D go? So you look at vitamin D that's in your circulation right now. And the one that we are looking for is actually called 25 hydroxy vitamin D. That's what the blood test is. That's what we are looking for in your, um, when we prick your finger and I check my vitamin D here, I've done a couple times online. Um, and un I don't know if it's unfortunate or fortunate, but when you look at vitamin D, it's fat soluble. So anything fat soluble can't float around our aqueous or water-based blood without a carrier, without a, a unit of a, a protein that binds to it and delivers it to different parts of the body. So there's that protein and you got to make plenty of that. So you have to be nourished enough for both of those. But once you've got the 25 hydroxy vitamin D connected to that protein, it will circulate throughout the system. It will go to different cells and do different things inside each of those cells. And as you watch the transition uh, from one place to the next, there's a couple of things that sabotage you. Like any <laughs> problem with fat uh, or fat-based molecules or this protein, it will deliver the fat-based problem, fat-based molecule, fat-based hormone of vitamin D into your fat cells if you are insulin resistant, if you have too high of insulin. So as I look at what I was doing really well when I went from early January to that six weeks, you know, five, five weeks later, uh, during the tanning bedtime, I was doing a good job. I kind of leveled up, made sure I was eating well, and I had a pretty good, like, I don't, I didn't cheat too much. Um, but as I look at what I've done since, especially June 1st, <laughs> so June 1st to the end of July, I just have had a lot of setbacks. I've had a lot of times where I'm like, I don't care. I just want some wine or some carbs or things that I know are not good for me. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you saw me eat sardines for a week, and then you saw that I put in a continuous glucose monitor because... Yeah, I'm just as human. I'm without my support group too, and that's got to be fixed. <laughs> um, I just unloaded furniture on Friday into an office that is totally not ready for support group, but I I'm working my way there. And after seeing this vitamin D mess, I am even more passionate about saying, okay, if this was my fat cells, um, I every time that I would flare off of uh, my path of what I should be doing, I have a history of being insulin resistant, like many people. Like this is a very common problem. Uh, and sometimes I forget and I don't want it to be my problem. I want it to be somebody else's problem. <laughs> but looking at uh, vitamin D inside that fat cell, every time I would eat any circulating vitamin D, uh, when the insulin would raise and go high, I would just push it into my fat cells because that's what insulin tells that fat-based molecule to do. Um, and as you look at that delivery inside those fat based uh, of that fat based molecule inside the, the fat cells, it's there until you empty the fat cell. So again, when I'm wearing my continuous glucose monitor, when I'm eating only sardines, when I don't screw it up, I'm sure I empty a few fat cells. But that scale did not go anywhere but up since <laughs> the end of May. And not a lot, but enough to say, okay, I got to get it back together. I got to find my rhythm again. And I know that any of my, when I say, where did my vitamin D go? 
Well, it's inside, but it's not in a place that can be useful. It's stored with all the other fat that's in my body, uh, and that is inside your adipose cells. So as you look at um, another, um, so you got, where did it go? Now we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about what that vitamin D was supposed to do short-term in my body and what I am planning on it doing long-term in my body. So if you look at the short-term, you've got vitamin D right there. Yep. Beautiful vitamin D. It's floating around your blood. It's got that carrier. And when you watch to see how well can vitamin D uh, help me, help uh, prevent the problems that... Um, we, we all need help with, we're going to talk about this cell here, which, which is a macrophage. Um, you could also, a dendritic cell inside the gut has a very similar process. Um, you've heard me talk, uh, if you go back several months, probably October, maybe November uh, of 2020, I talked about T cells and how important those cells are at recognizing when infections come in and what happens to them. And as I look at those um, those those cells like this, let me show you what happens in my body when my vitamin D that's sitting right there that I'm supposed to be able to use is too low to do its job. So pretend this is in my lungs, okay? So those um, macrophages are sitting there waiting for any kind of invader or bacteria or infection or virus, tuberculosis, influenza, coronavirus uh, to come into your body. And so if those are the cells that represent these little viruses and they're hanging out outside the cell, that little green protein is actually one of a, it's like a toll receptor that says, hey, that pattern we recognize, this is an invader and it will pull in that virus. Uh, and as soon as it's inside the cell, it sends a message off to the nucleus to make a couple of proteins. So these proteins are really important. They're really important. And when they are inside those macrophages and they're they're turned on, they're upregulated, they're working, they are waiting for vitamin D. So as you can see, my little vitamin D is still outside the cell because it's so low. It's not got a high enough vitamin D to enter the cell. And as that cell sits there, it's waiting. It says, hey, hey, we've got a problem. We've got an invader. But because my vitamin D is really not accessible, it's either in my fat cells or it is so low that it can't help me, uh, the virus can win. So it starts to replicate inside this macrophage. It's doing its nasty thing. It's actually taking and stealing the iron that's in there because it needs iron to replicate. And it will divide and divide and divide, and it will get to the maximum level of, uh, of the, uh, that the cell can hold uh, before the cell dies. And you say, oh, isn't that good? The virus is in there too. No, 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 no. The virus lives. The cell dies, and now all these little turkeys go and infect other cells. And again, the macrophage is the one that's most built to fight these off, but the macrophage couldn't do its job because vitamin D didn't get activated. It didn't do what it's supposed to do. So let's take that same situation where those viruses came into my beautiful macrophages inside my lungs. This happens in the gut as well, in dendritic cells. Um, and that vitamin D goes from 25 hydroxy to 125 because of, you guessed it, that protein. So it comes into the mitochondria. It takes that vitamin D and activates it. My apologies. Oh. I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> My watch started talking to me. Oh, it scared me. <laughs> so it becomes activated. Um, that the vitamin D, uh, I put little po pokies on it like a sunshine, like it's the real thing. It's now activated. Uh, I'll tell you that it was in my studies that I just thought that only happened in the kidney. But throughout coronavirus and the pandemic, there's been a ton of energy put into understanding vitamin D. And I'm sure the really research smarty pants doctors knew all this, but I had I did not know that you activated part of the vitamin D inside a macrophage. And it's based on that little thing called a VDR. That's really important. If you are looking at studies and you don't have a VDR that they're measuring, it's kind of worthless. They really need to measure that in order to know what they're doing with it. So here's that activated vitamin D with a VDR bound to it. It goes into the nucleus, like all fat-based hormones, like testosterone, estrogen, uh, estradiol, aldosterone, um, cortisol. They're all built from cholesterol and fat, and they go into our nucleuses, and it takes a little longer for this hormone that's built from fat as opposed to hormones that are built from like protein or amino acids, this is fat, goes into the nucleus and it does this magical thing. Watch this. So 
it stimulates the production of proteins. So that those little squiggly lines are supposed to be like RNA transcription. And you don't have to know the names of these uh, proteins, but that catalocytin is really important for fighting off infections. So as that vitamin D turns on the transcription inside that cell, now my body could fight off that virus. And what happens next is that that catalocytin did its job uh, and said, hey, we really need these macrophages to go gobble up that, vitamin, that virus, put it inside there, and then the virus gets destroyed. Uh, in addition to what's happening, and for those of you that really care, it is also taking iron and it's porting it out of the uh, that macrophage, that dendritic cell, those T cells. Any any place where that virus was going to try and replicate, it said, hey, we're going to take away your favorite food, push it outside the cell until we destroy you, and then it will put it back. So it gets rid of its favorite food, makes it very difficult to replicate. That cathelocytin is another place that is uh, one of the markers for how well people survive uh, the, the, the infections. In fact, my ICU colleagues have learned that it's not just that vitamin D before the, these infections was important. If they get into the ICU, like if my mother was in the ICU today, uh, they would inject her with vitamin D and it sends the vitamin D really high, like so high that every doctor who's not in the ICU would say, oh, isn't that toxic? Isn't that way too high? But the front lines say we have no toxicity signs that th those cells just like gobble it up and it gets put inside that cell. It gets into their nucleus. They start transcribing the things like catholicidin and those who got injections of vitamin D while in the ICU trying to fight off those viruses lived longer. I mean, they, they lived, they got out of the hospital. Uh, that process of what vitamin D does is super important for the short term. So let me summarize that because it's a lot of science and I love that, but some of you, some of y'all don't like that. Um, again, your vitamin D level is how well you will respond to invaders. It is also uh, the way that you prevent that overproduction of cytokines. Those cytokines are related to how well those proteins are built, how well they're waiting, and how well your system is ready to surge when it should surge and then rest when it should rest. And vitamin D pay plays a huge component in that. All right, so now let's go to the long-term needs. So we did, where did my vitamin D go? It was hiding in my fat cells. What did I miss out short term is that any virus that came into my lungs, my body had to work harder to get rid of it because my vitamin D was low. And what are the long term needs? Now, this is where I really care because this is where the diabetes, the cholesterol, uh, the diabetes, the um, the memory problems, the uh, depression. Uh, and again, remember back in January, what motivated me to check my own vitamin D was my brain just was sad. It was just awful. And as much as I'd finished the book, I had the workbook left to do. And it wasn't, I mean, it was my own pressure, but I still, I like it when I say, okay, hunker down, we can do this. And I just couldn't. Uh, so again, long-term vitamin D, I've, I've shown this before, and I want to point this out as uh, before I roll off these uh, things, I want you to look at this. So along the side, are all or several different uh, studies that talk about how can we decrease the incidence? How can we prevent these problems when vitamin D is higher? So the red line right there is at 25 uh, for the US numbers. And it's like at, I think 60 something if you're in the UK. With um, that number of, if my number had come back 25, this would correlate perfectly. My number, um, you know, came back in the 30s, uh, except that one time where it was high because I was doing everything right. And then it was like 39 the first time, then 36, then 32. So I was in the 30s. But what I know is important is that if I want to prevent these things, we know that several different studies have said, yes, we can prevent that uh, by a certain level based on how much above 25 the vitamin D was. So again, my personal goal is to get me closer to 60 than not. And if I look at, let's just take all cancers. If I took my numbers in the 30s, uh, from if it was 25, and I took it up to 38, I would decrease the risk of all cancers by 35%. And again, Grandma Rose gives me a pretty good genetic history of be careful of that. But let's just take breast cancer. If I took my number from 24 to 34, you would see me decrease my risk of breast cancer by 30%. 
But if I got it to 50, you could decrease the risk of breast cancer by 83%. That is a powerful message. Colon cancer is another really good one that says, yes, we could decrease the cancer risk uh, to 31, by 31% if you took it from 24 to 34. But if you took it up to that low 40s, you could decrease the risk of colon cancer by 60%. That, there's nothing else that I can do. I don't care. All the fiber in the world doesn't decrease the risk as much as your vitamin D level does. But it has to stay there to do this. All that transcription stuff that I showed you with the virus, it has a different message that it does in your colon cells. It transcribes different proteins in your brain cells. It transcribes different proteins in your heart cells. This hormone has receptors in all of your cells. There isn't a cell that doesn't have it. And because it's fat soluble, it will go into the nucleus. And inside that nucleus, it will then transcribe a protein. Uh, the other part that I, I have just incredible sorrow every time I think about this is multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is something that in South Dakota, in the northern latitudes, away from the sun, our vitamin D is lower. And the women that I have put in wheelchairs and surrendered not knowing what else to do telling them, yes, your vitamin D should be increased, but not really doing a good job of saying, that means you cannot have a high insulin state if you want your vitamin D to be active and not stuck in your fat cells. It was just as important for those women to have that improvement as it was as it is me the last five months. Um, so you look at that improvement and, um, I mean, to, to decrease their uh, risk of multiple sclerosis by 54%, uh, if they took it from a 24 to a 54, I, I, you don't know the number of women that would, they would decrease, they would do that in a heartbeat if, if they knew the rules. Um, so as I look at the punchline here, what I want you to hear, what, what I'm trying to say is yes, vitamin D really matters. Uh, as, as you look out at, um, some of the goals that I have for my patients is to empower them to know the rules of the big punchlines that, yes, you can go to your doctor and we can take care of those advanced problems. That's our job. But we should have the ability, we should teach you how to control or how to manage some of the, like, get 90% of it taken care of before you see the doctor. And one of those is your vitamin D. Vitamin D isn't an kind of accidental, oh, I think I'm fine. And I'm a perfect example. I am passionate about vitamin D and five, you know, I don't know, six weeks of crazy life trying to get vitamin D corrected. And I, I mean, I, I fell to 32, which is the lowest I've seen it in a while. So as I look at the reasons why I will stay keto, the reasons that I will keep my insulin down is, well, I'd like to empty those fat cells that I've, that I've filled, but I also would would want to have the vitamin D checked again and measured. So when I look at the places where I put my energy, where I put my money, where I put my, um, my name, it is that this two pack of vitamin D test that I, I tested with my kids. I tested with my colleagues. Um, I sent it to a friend saying, that's the best thing I can gift you for your birthday. Check your vitamin D. <laughs> and honest to God, it is a very valuable process of, do this at home, prick your finger. It's not that hard of a process. And when they do that, uh, the improvement in how well their, their, their bodies do, um, but also their understanding that says, I know you think it's good. I know you think you're taking your vitamin D well enough. Um, but uh, I'm here to tell you that maybe there's more to the story than having a... Um, uh, the thoughts that it would be elevated. Cause just like me, I, I thought mine would be fine. <laughs> I thought it would be great. <laughs> so as I look at what am I going to do about it? What am I doing about getting my vitamin D back up to where it belongs? Well, number one, <laughs> I'm trying not to cheat. I'm back, uh, in, uh, a season where I can at least predict tomorrow. Uh, and that hasn't been the case with, I mean, all the things that had unfolded. Some blessings, but definitely um, uh, the improvement of having your uh, your own ability to, to run a schedule, uh, keep that ketone levels elevated, keep that blood glucose stable. Um, you know, I didn't do that sardine challenge by accident. Um, 
fish oil is actually very high in vitamin D. Uh, it's best when it comes from an actual animal. So sardines is what I choose because I just don't like fussing. <laughs> so it's in a can. It's well, it's got a nice little, uh, oh, I thought I might have one that, near me. I don't though. Uh, it's in a nice serving size that is not, I'm not going to overeat. Um, but it also is um, a place where if I do that, I'm satisfied. I don't eat as much. And the improvement of my my mental health, my energy, and my ketones <laughs> all got better. Stay tuned because I, I and I checked those two uh, those two vitamin Ds about a week apart. One before uh, it's almost like the last week I was in South Dakota, and then one a week after doing sardines, which I was on a plane, so I was half South Dakota, half Florida, um, and. It didn't really in, uh, change much, but it is at least going in the right direction. Um, I would never recommend checking them that close together. I would make a change and measure it in six weeks. Uh, I put two of these uh, packs inside a, um, uh, two of the tests inside a pack because number one, if it is not normal, change something and then check it again. Um, but if it is normal, well, you can save it for the winter season, if you're, especially if you're my, my friends in South Dakota. Uh, the sun does matter. Uh, as I look at what I expect to improve in Florida, I expect to get more sun in South Dakota or in Florida than I did in South Dakota. But I also um, am not going to leave it to chance. I'm going to check. So either gift it to somebody who isn't checking their vitamin D or save it till uh, a time when the seasons change. Uh, so here's a, a question by Lisa it says, can vitamin D be too high? The last time I checked, it was 110. So um, when it's 110, just know that uh, vitamin D will last in your blood for 15 days. And what, whatever you're supplementing, you can probably back it down a little. You don't have to have it that high. It doesn't really benefit you. Um, toxicities from vitamin D do exist, but it is a massive amount for a very long period of time. So you'll see warnings that the vitamin D is, um, is a, um, it, do, it does have toxicity. It's fat soluble and you can get too much. Um, but it's again, 110, I would say, ah, just slow down on, on how much you're taking a week and then recheck again in four to five months. Um, because you can't believe how quickly, I mean, you want to see your vitamin D go down instantly um, and, you know, go on a high carbohydrate diet with insulin resistance because you'll sweep it all into your fat cells. Uh, and 15 days later, it'll be down into your 50s. Uh, and I've seen it this, I mean, I'm telling you my numbers because it's easy to tell you mine and not run into any troubles. Um, but when I watch um, uh, what other patients have struggled with, they'll be like, I don't know, I went up on my insulin dose and I just checked my vitamin D and it's like 25. I mean, there is an IQ decrease when it's below 20. In the in when it's between 20 and 30, uh, there is an association with a strong correlation to depression, anxiety, or mental health issues. Um, uh, Red, Red Leaf says, are tanning beds okay? All right, so here's the deal with tanning beds. You should not get burned. Uh, South Dakota is a great, um, is my, you know, it's my home state. So I think of them where they all wear long sleeves, long short, long pants, uh, you know, they cover their bodies because the the um, their systems, I mean, they go out in the cold and they need to be covered. So even if they're outside for 15 minutes, they're not exposing their skin to the sun. And if I look at what vitamin, you need to have the UVB rays. So there's UVA rays and they, they are the ones with the strongest correlation uh, to uh, melanoma. Uh, UVB rays are the ones that are um, did I say that right? UVB rays are the ones that in, improve the vitamin D. I'm just thinking of melanoma. I, I saw those slides about four days ago. So I haven't, hold on, let me just check something. Uh, I can't look at it right here. Oh, well. Um, there is going to be a video coming out on that. I'm working on some other vitamin D, but it won't be alive. <laughs> um, let's see. Can you explain, um, High phosphorus was due to vitamin D toxicity. Uh, so what I would do is I would recheck your vitamin D in, in, in four weeks. I, I, I seriously would really just recheck it. And what happens in most people is that um, 
especially if they've gone keto and they're really working to decrease the inflammation. If they're keto within the last eight weeks, I don't check anything then. I get them to, I love them to wait till six months because then all the noise of going keto and sticking to keto and staying keto are all present. Uh, if they've made a recent change, stayed keto, fell off the wagon two weeks ago, now they're back on. Oh, it's so hard to measure some of those things and make sense out of them because I need stability for about 15 days straight before you check some of these fat-based hormones. So when you have high phosphorus, yes, phosphorus is, uh, or vitamin D is in one of the things that hormone does is it, it strengthens our bones. So when you look at that increased vitamin D strengthening, uh, you can see that that bone is building. Um, the phosphorus is a minor issue there, and I would look further before I would surrender that. Um, let's see. There is another. Uh, all right. So I, I have a couple, one more thing I wanted to go through there. Um, Oh, I know what I was going to tell you. So it is uh, about 40 minutes in. I am going to give a qu another quick announcement before I check my sugars and, and numbers and then give uh, away some books. So what, well, I know what I was going to do. <laughs> uh, let me go here. Uh, let's go to the internet one and go here. I want you to see that this is um, bozmd.com. And this website is where you can go and purchase this. So if you go to the, the store and you click on that, um, you're going to see that one of the top uh, um, products there is um, vitamin D. Um, if you look at that test, um, it does come with two kits. Um, in, in the clinic, when patients come in and say, I want my vitamin D checked, and if they've had it checked in the last couple of years, usually we have to have them sign a waiver that they will pay for it. Um, almost always that the cost of that is close to $80 per test. That doesn't include the lab fee that they need for the lab draw. So that's getting them north of $120 by the time the lab draw is done. And honestly, um, it's a lot of work for the whole medical team. One of the reasons I'm so excited about giving this to you, you check your vitamin D, you prick your finger. It's much cheaper, about 50 bucks uh, each. Uh, for uh, that vitamin D, and then spread the love. Check somebody else's. Like I checked all of my children uh, as they head to college. I want their brains working the best possible that they can, but I also want their immune systems working. Uh, I don't want them, you know, any more vulnerable than they need to be. And uh, I, you know, but two kits and I, anytime a friend was over, I checked theirs as well, just because it, it really does change um, their commitment once they see what is their number. It didn't help much that mom's was worse than theirs. So <laughs> I don't know if I didn't need myself any favors. Um, all right. So I, I share what that with you just so that you can see this isn't uh, about um, just having a vitamin D checked randomly. I'm, I don't have a privilege here. I, re I will be uh, continuing to educate on vitamin D and I don't put my name on things unless I really believe in them. You should be the one checking your vitamin D. Don't wait for your doctor to do it. Show up saying, why would it be so much different two months apart? And then use this as a way to help you think through what your benefits are. And then I'd be checking, how is your insulin level? Because if your vitamin D says, I can't get it higher, I can't get it higher, uh, go on a ketogenic diet, stay on a ketogenic diet, stay there for at least, at least two weeks solid before you check it again. And then see what, then see what you say. All right. So, um, Let's see. Uh, all right. I want um, to share one more announcement that I, I already told you about the idea that I needed to uh, move when our lives are. And so if you put in the comments where you would like uh, the lives to go, uh, if you're a neuron, we're going to put another poll up. I know I put one up over the weekend that said a different time on Sundays. And then my husband's like, you understand that there's about three other times where you're just going to have to either cancel it. And I don't want to do that. I like having a rhythm of being present. Um, at these during the times when, you know, I think it's it's important for, for the channel, but I think it's important for me too, as I continue to see what your questions are and where your, um, uh, where your journeys are leading. Um, it's, uh, it's helpful for me to look at the content and um, it, some people, this is the only support they get is a, a, a live session. So, um, all right. Um, 
I'm actually thinking about Tuesdays because Sunday night's Bible or Wednesday night's Bible study. And I do have um, somebody said not Mondays. That's when Ken Berry does his. And I'm like, yep, I, I, Monday nights doesn't work either, actually. So Tuesdays and oh, I'm now on the East Coast. So it's not. Ah, anyway, keep, put your comments in. We'll see where this goes. And then um, there was one. one other, oh, um, what other thing was I going to tell you? Moving the lives. I haven't, but my notes are all over there. <laughs> all right. Well, let's check my numbers and maybe it'll come to me. Um, I think that's, who, who knows? <laughs> all right. I'm going to check my numbers uh, while I look at your, um, I look at, <laughs> uh, oops, uh, while I look at your qu other questions. So yeah, Tuesdays would be great. Thursdays would be great. Tuesdays is good. You know, the other part that, oh, I know what I was going to tell you. Got it. Yes. Um, is that when you leave a video live, um, it circulates through this algorithm of YouTube. And what we have learned is that um, if you're new to keto, these lives are probably not for you. These lives are for the people who've read the book, who are in for the long game, who are looking for support, who are doing this full, full circle. <laughs> and... I don't. Um, uh, I don't pretend to 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 see um, to to want people to show up on Sunday nights unless they're in that season. But as we try to make content for people that are new, we've learned that we probably shouldn't leave our lives up in that way. So, oh shoot. Um, so my, oh good grief, I have to do that again. Um, so we've pro we've learned that we if if we leave the live just um, circulating out there for the algorithm, it lands on people who've just watched one of our short videos, one of our you know little bitty nuggets of information, as opposed to the information that you guys like, which is this me talking on uh, to sharing what I'm doing and sharing what the struggles are and how do you get in a support group and how do I answer your questions. I mean that's a different audience than the people who are looking at. Um, that are looking at uh, the the short term, uh, the quick, you know, seven minute videos, the neuron videos, and I will. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know that I did much help here. I'm sweating like a <laughs> sweaty. So my ketones are about the same. My my glucose went up by ten points. Um, I'll tell you that I just finished drinking the last of my ketone supplement. And it'll probably be high in about 10 minutes, but I'll, I'll post it on Instagram and you can follow it there. Um, so what does that mean for you when you watch this live? Um, we'll have it out there in the ether, uh, you know, just in your regular world for about 24 hours after the live. But if you go back and watch a replay of one of our lives, which I think they're valuable, I think it's helpful for people who are really trying to dive in. Um, but as we keep surfacing the, these lives to people who just, they're just not, they're not you. <laughs> they're not the people that show up on Sunday night. Um, they unsubscribe and we don't want that. We want to deliver the content to them that they want. So in order to sort that out, there will be a playlist on my, on our homepage that is all the lives and you can go back in and click through them. And if you show up live, you'll get to see it live. And if you push the little bell, it'll remind you that I'm going live. Um, but about 24 hours, maybe a little longer after the live, we're going to take it off of the public uh, status and we're going to put it on something called unlisted. And unlisted just means you got to go to the homepage. You got to find the playlist that is the lives and click on it. So um, we've just, you know, we want to reach more people. I do really want to grow this channel. Um, I think that it's a better journey than... Uh, seeing one patient at a time, uh, especially when you look at how, um, you know, medicine's changing in a lot of ways. And I think this can be uh, the roots for many people. Uh, keeping it free means we got to keep growing uh, and I want to keep it free. But the lives, um, if you want to come back and watch them, you're going to have to go to the homepage and find the playlist of Live with Dr. Boz and you'll see them all there. But you will not probably get, uh, you can't just surf them like you used to be able to surf one of the ones of, you know, I don't know what, a live that you wanted to go back and watch again. Um, all right. So having said all that, um, my, the, my, the mosquitoes are out. Can you see me itching? 
thank you for somebody that noticed. So yeah, so essentially uh, uh, Clover uh, says that, yeah, so they're going to be archived, kind of archived. They're going to be on the homepage. You can go to that playlist and you can click on them and you can watch them at any time. You just can't type in Dr. Boz and then uh, I think there's one of them where I'm wearing a skunk hat and it's uh, maybe that one's not live. Anyway, if you typed in that, you couldn't find it on a search engine on YouTube. You'd have to go to the to the list and just scroll down and say, um, here's what the title of that was. Anyway, you could do the search specifically on the Dr. Boz YouTube channel, but you could not be out there in the big ether that way. All right. I hope that makes sense. Um, uh where is the poll on Facebook? Mike B, it is on the Neurons page. So if you're a Neuron, head to the Neurons page. Uh, and I actually, I did it for just a couple, I did it over the weekend looking at how well uh, just changing the time on Sundays would look. I'm going to put up another poll on that to say which days of the week that I can do would be better. And then we'll try to find something. I, I'm. It's only for about three months that uh, I have a absolute conflict on Sundays for about half of the Sundays at least that I can see. And again, it's the first week of school. So I'm sure that if I look uh, at, at the schedule <laughs> in, in three months, if I look back, I bet you it's going to be more than half of the days that I'm going to just have to be the mom and not the doctor. So if you can just uh, know that I'm trying and we'll do our best. My son does. Um, oh, somebody asked, how did Chancellor do with sleeping outside? So my son um, if you can see back there, I don't know if you see the hammock hanging uh, right there. Yeah. So he slept there last night and I put out a bet. Or I put out a poll on in the Facebook post saying, how long do you think he'll made it? He made it the whole night. <laughs> he said, I slept great, mom. I could hear this dolphin 